story time of how I caught my teacher and my best friend doing the dirty. So everything was fine up until the middle of the year when she started acting really strange and so did he. So at the time I was 13 and she was 14. And I'm pretty sure my teacher was in his mid 20s or 30s. So basically she's the type of girl who literally hates school and would do anything to get out of class. Then I noticed her getting early to class and not leaving until everybody else left. Then I started paying a little more attention and he would always walk by her desk and slip her notes and candy and just weird stuff and it was really really strange to me. He also moved to her desk right next to his, which his was all the way in the back left corner of the classroom. He would also always make jokes with her, which I didn't really understand until I found out they were sleeping together. So on Friday, my mom messaged her parents asking if they could pick me up Monday because my parents were going out of town that weekend and I hated riding the bus. Well, I'm guessing she didn't know that I was going home with her Monday. So that Monday, I got into her mom's car and I asked her mom where she was. Her mom said that she was failing math and her math teacher offered to tutor her. This teacher was also brand new. I'm running out of time, so I'd like for part two. Here's part two of how I found out my best friend was sleeping with our teacher. So continuing on with the story, I told her mom that I've never seen him tutor somebody before. Plus, she told me her grades were sky high in that class. I ended up forgetting my pencil pouch, which had my keys to my house in it, so I had to go back anyways. And when I went back, the door was locked. And like he had something over it or whatever, but I could see under it because he didn't cover it all the way. And she was on his desk and he was kissing her or doing weird stuff. I knew her mom wouldn't believe me if I told her what I saw, so I just told her it was an emergency and she was in trouble. So we booked it back to the classroom, and at first we didn't see them, and then she seen a foot come from beside the desk. Mind you, we're peeking under it, so we couldn't really see much. Her, she started banging on the classroom door and screaming, I've never seen her this mad. I was honestly terrified that I ran into a separate classroom. The teacher to this day, I'm pretty sure he's still in jail, and she is still homeschooled and grounded with no phone. We found out that he was married with four kids. Well, was married. Okay, so story time. By the way, go to at Glam by Helen on Instagram and send me your story. You may be featured. Okay, so let's start from the beginning. My best friend stole from literally everyone. Like, it was kind of a problem. Well, there was this one time she stole a $50 bill from our teacher's wallet. I have no clue how she didn't get caught. Anyways, we lived in a small town in Florida. So, we'll call my best friend Destiny. Well, Destiny's mom was kind of short and her dad was really tall. I promise this plays into the story. Anyways, long story short, Destiny took after her dad and her sister took after her mom. So she was like hella tall. So anyway, she asked me to walk to the Jifty store in our town. So I didn't think anything of it, so I was like, yeah, sure, why not? Went inside and she told me to come with her straight to the register. I was kind of confused, but I just rolled with it. As soon as she walked up to the register, she pulls out her sister's wallet and I recognized it immediately. Then she pulls out a lottery ticket that had $6,000 on it. Like for part two. Okay, so part two. So anyway, she pulled out a $6,000 lottery ticket. Like she won it. Like there was $6,000 on that ticket. Well, anyways, the lady said I need to see your ID. Obviously, she was like under age. But she looked so much older than what she was. So she pulls out her sister's ID and gives it to the cashier. And she walked out of that damn store with $6,000 in her hand. I yelled at her the entire way to her house. Then we finally got up there and she told me to shut up. Uh, kind of rude. Whatever. I didn't want to get into trouble, so I did. Then she slips her sister's wallet back in her purse. And then she told me that we would go shopping the next day for everything. I mean, kind of fun though. I went straight home and I told my Nana. And my Nana told her dad. And her damn sister didn't even know it was gone. And then the next day, my best friend literally came to school with her dad. Then her dad started talking on the intercom. Like to the whole school. Like for part three. Okay, so part three. So her dad literally went and talked into the intercom. I don't even know how he got past the principal. Anyways, he started saying stuff about her. Like stuff that would embarrass her. For example, like she, how she stole all that money, picked her boogers, and he even told the entire school who she liked. FYI, she did tell her dad all these things. And the entire school never looked at her the same way. She got bullied everywhere she went. I mean, that's payback, right?
more time about the best thing I saw while working in a restaurant. We've got a veteran who comes in on the regular named Hank. Hank lost his leg and hand in Iraq. When seeing this, people will often pick up his tab when he's in here, but he never feels like it's deserved, so he tries to lay low. He wears long pants to cover his prosthetic leg and doesn't wear anything to show off his veteran status. He doesn't like attention and is clear he doesn't feel special treatment is deserved. So, obviously, we shut down because of COVID. We reopened when our state did, but after a week of indoor dining, the owner decided to go back to delivery and take out for everyone's safety. Thankfully, business is still booming. I don't know the specifics of Hank's situation, but I think he lost his job sometime during the shutdown. Before COVID, we'd see him at least once a month, but this was the first time we'd seen him since we reopened. To make matters worse, he would easily put away six tacos or a whole chicken plus sides and plenty of beer when he'd come in, but this time he just ordered a small burrito and a water. He didn't mention the different order though, just said how excited he was to come through again and looking forward to it all week. We put in his order while I went to go get him paid up. However, his car declined. I started to tell him, but he could see it on the screen and went, shit. Shame and panic washed over his face as I tried running it again and again when he gave me another card that declined. Meanwhile, it was the height of lunch rush and the line was getting longer, so people were peering to see what was taking so long. After running Hank's cards a few times, all of his cards declined. He started saying, hey, you know what? Did you actually make the thing yet? But then the bag came out with his name unmistakably on it. He started digging around his pockets for cash and came up with 525. The meal was $7. I told him, don't worry about it. You'll get us next time. Knowing how embarrassed he got when people tried to cover him for a good reason, being a veteran, and not wanting to pile on by being for that I was covering him for a not so great reason. Hard times. However, he wasn't entertaining the idea of taking food without paying it in full. Finally, without making eye contact with us, he said, no, no, it's okay. I'm just going to go uh, to my place and get some more cash. However, I knew that look on his face and the tone in his voice. There was no more to go get. It's a look and tone I've used myself and seen from others more times than I wish I had. I wanted to insist he take the food, but I wasn't sure which was worse. To force food on him and risk damaging his dignity or to let him save face but go without the lunch he's been looking so forward to. Before I could decide, the girl behind him who had been texting for most of our transaction had just begun to tune in and caught the last bit. She asked, hey, what's the difference on what he owes? I said, two bucks. She went in her purse and handed it right to me. Hank started to try and hand it back to her, telling her it wasn't necessary, but she cut him off. She cut him off by saying, no, 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 it's two dollars. We've all been there. Enjoy your lunch. As he finally gave in and went to put her money on the counter, she noticed his prosthetic hand. She did a double take and said, actually, no, you know what? Let me get the whole thing. Give him his money back. Then went in her purse and got the rest. He tried to stop her from doing it, but she replied, listen, I hope I'm not being presumptuous, but you're a veteran, right? He nodded. Yeah, that's what I thought. I served two hours in Afghanistan. There's a guy walking around on false legs out there who's the reason I'm walking around at all. So please, allow me to do this and don't think twice about it. I tell you to just get anything you want off the menu if times weren't so tight for me right now too. At this point, an older guy with a bow tie came up and announced, I couldn't help but over here. Put both their tabs on me, get them anything they want, and then get them some more. Thank you both for your service. Hank was getting pretty emotional at this point, but even still, they both started to vigorously protest to the man that he didn't need to do that because it was their job and they both signed up for it. Bowtie guy wouldn't hear it. He must have had his own story because he got red in the face and blinked back tears but stayed silent. He left his credit card with me and went back to his spot in line. That's when another guy stepped up to the register. Part two of the best thing I saw while working in a restaurant. This guy handed me his card as well and said, yeah, I'm gonna split that tab, so really guys, go wild, you're American heroes. They both empathetically told him, no, they're not heroes, but this guy cut him off saying, oh please, I get overwhelmed playing Call of Duty, you're heroes and I'm glad to thank you for it. So they started ordering and the girl knew just what she wanted. Hank asked how much our steak and rice platter special would cost. Older Bowtie dude called him not to tell him the prices and get him whatever he wants. He came up and said, son, no one can put a price on your sacrifice. Call of Duty guy splitting the tab chimed in, the meat that we're giving you is a lot less valuable than the meat you gave up for us. His friend elbowed him to shut up, horrified, but he got a belly laugh out of Hank. Throughout this, no one noticed not only had a Hank lost his hand but also his leg. His pants covered and he's got too much honor to bring it up. By now, the kitchen got a whiff of what was happening and loaded them up real good. This lady was so moved that she paid for old man bow tie and Call of Duty's meals. It was a domino effect. The owner was so disturbed that two veterans had struggled to pay for their meals. He instituted a military gets the special free day of the week even though we've been hemorrhaging money since the pandemic closures and keeping the doors open on a week-to-week -week basis. Hank told all of his veteran friends and they've been coming in with their families. It's been great for business. My family, who is extremely homophobic, ended up kicking me out and replacing me with my best friend. My family is absolutely awful when it comes to topics about the LGBTQ plus community. Literally any mention of it and they get extremely upset. Which sounds like they're suppressing something to me, but I had a friend that we can call Katie and my family absolutely adored her. Every Christmas they would buy her presents, she would spend family movie night with us, and they honestly treated her like she was the favorite daughter. So one day I made the decision to come out and I decided to talk to Katie about it. She was literally so supportive and so respectful that I gained the confidence to talk to my family about it. Bad idea. Hell striked and they immediately kicked me out of the house. So I found myself on a schedule of switching from couch to couch at different friends' houses. One particular night that was really hard for me, I decided to go visit them. I was missing them and also hopeful that they might accept me back in. And as I approached the house, my best friend was over there. She was playing games and doing family movie night with them. And so I decided to knock on the door. I burst into tears and went off on all of them. The absolute audacity. Later, my best friend texted me saying that she had a secret. Follow my Insta. Part two to my homophobic family kicking me out of the house and replacing me with my best friend. So I cannot believe the audacity of my family literally replacing me with Katie. 
Not only was she just over there for movie night, but they had actually moved her into my room, the room that I was raised in. I felt so much fury that I had to walk around the neighborhood for a while just to calm down. But eventually I just started to walk back to the house that I was staying at. Once I got in, Katie messaged me. She apologized for being such a bad friend, but then she said she had a secret. And she came out to me as bisexual and begged me not to tell my family. She felt like my family was her own and she didn't want to get kicked out. I was so frustrated that she was keeping the same secret that I had in my house, but she's getting to actually stay at my house. It has been a full year now and she is still with them to this day. But thankfully, I'm now living with my boyfriend and his family has accepted me as bisexual. I am honestly so much happier and better off. If you guys have a story that you'd like to share, follow me and DM me on Instagram. Story time about how my crazy friend told me that she's attracted to me and I eventually had to block her. And yeah, she's a girl. And yes, this is my own story time. Oh yeah, and by the way, my makeup collab with Unnatural dropped today, so please click the link in my bio. I am so proud of it and it is super affordable makeup. So back in 2016, I was living in LA by myself. I was pretty much on set every single week and I auditioned almost every day. So I was meeting tons of people and actors at that time. And I was making lots of friends. During one of these auditions, I met this girl, let's call her Jess. Jess was super cute and funny and she made me laugh a lot. After the audition, she asked me if I wanted to share an Uber with her, which I thought was really sweet. But when we got into the Uber, she was asking me so many questions. Like, this girl wanted to know everything about me. Finally, we exchanged phone numbers, and when I got home, she sent me a text. She asked me to go out with her and her friends. I had so much work the next day, I told her no. That's when she calls me really angry, telling me that I need to live my life. You'll never guess what she said. Part 2 is up. Part 2 of how my friend told me she was attracted to me and I eventually had to block her. If you haven't heard, I dropped my first makeup collab today with Our Natural. Please click the link in my bio to shop. It's super affordable makeup and I'm so proud of it. So she calls me on the phone after I told her I didn't want to go out. And she starts yelling at me. She says that I needed to live my life. Then she said, give me your address. I'm coming over right now to pick you up. That's when I was honest with her and I told her that she's putting a lot of pressure on me and that I barely even know her. Then she kind of backed off because she heard my tone of voice. And she told me that she was a very intuitive person that she could tell that I was holding something back. I told her we could hang out that weekend and she said fine. Then she proceeded to text me every single day. Really thought we were building a friendship so we talked about a lot of stuff. And I was finally happy to have a real girlfriend. At least I thought. Finally the weekend comes around. But I get my period. My periods are pretty bad so I told her that I wouldn't be able to go out. Once again she calls me super angry. She said I needed to man up and basically take D-R-U-G-S. Like the green stuff. I sort of laughed on the phone and this made her even more angry. That's when she hung up. But then she calls me right back. Part 3 is up. Part 3 of how my crazy friend told me she was attracted to me and eventually I had to block her. By the way, the blue pigment is from my collab with Our Natural, so please go click the link in my auto shop. Super affordable. So after she hung up on me, she calls me right back. That's when I told her that she was being really strange and I just didn't like it. She apologized and begged me to come out. Finally, I said yes because she was just being so annoying. So I go out with her and her friends for a few hours. Then I literally had to beg her to let me go home. Throughout the night, she kept holding my hand and kissing it. Another two weeks passed by and we just kept texting, but I definitely knew that I was not going to go out with her again. But of course she invites me out again. That's when I told her that I didn't really think our friendship would work out. 30 minutes later she tells me to look out my window. Yep, she showed up to my apartment. Then she told me that I was confused, as in I didn't know if I liked men or women. I told her I definitely like guys. She told me she just wanted to take me out on one date. I asked her how she found out where I lived, and she said she found me. Story time on how I found out my sister was actually my mom. My parents were much more older than me, and I always felt more distant from them than any of my siblings. I'm 17 years old. I grew up with the big family. I have five siblings. My sister is 30, brother 29, another brother that's 29, and both of my sisters are 24 and 22. I always realized there was a big gap between me and the rest of them. I always figured that maybe I was an accident or unplanned. Being the youngest, I was spoiled all of the time. The way they treated me is how you would expect them to treat the youngest. My older sister Hannah always took care of me the best. I always saw her as a mother figure, never knowing that she was actually my real mom. She spent most of her time with me more than my other brothers and sisters. And she often took care of me when my mom wasn't there. And my parents were much more older than me, so I always felt like there was a distance between us. I ended up finding out Hannah was my mom after both of my parents passed away. If you want to know exactly how I found out, please come back for part two. Part two on how I found out my sister was actually my mom. When my father passed away, it was probably the worst part of my life. I was eight years old. I did not take it well at all. I cried for weeks and I went crazy. I threw fits at people. I know my siblings were all going through this just as bad as I was, but I made it all about me. I didn't even consider them or what they had been going through the whole time. And recently, the same thing happened to my mom. It hit me just as hard, if not harder. She'd been sick for a long time and slowly getting worse. I wasn't ready for it at all. It was after this Hannah told me the truth. She sat me down and braced me that what she was about to tell me, I would be shocked. 
She knew that we all were still recovering from my mother's passing, but a few weeks had passed and she felt like it was enough time to wait before actually coming out with the truth. Sorry, I can't do three minute long videos, but come back for part three if you wanna know exactly how she explained that she was my mom. So, Part three on how I found out my sister was actually my mom. She said she always wanted to tell me and only now she could finally. When she was 13, as many stupid kids do, she had unprotected ex with a boy and she had got pregnant and that child was me. At the time, her parents wanted to give her baby up for adoption, but she was unshakable and wanted to keep her child. She completely refused to give me away. They eventually agreed to keep me and would raise me in their household, but with their parents as the guardians. And I would grow up thinking that they were my real parents. Apparently, some of my older siblings also knew, but they never mentioned it. In fact, they're actually my aunts and uncles. My mother made Hannah swear that she would never tell me and that she could only tell me only after some time after her death. She said she wanted to die as a mother, not a grandmother. Hannah said all my life she wanted to tell me, but swore not to. And she was glad that she was able to tell me the truth. But if you want to know how I reacted to this, how I caught my teacher and my best friend doing the dirty. So everything was fine up until the middle of the year when she started acting really strange and so did he. So at the time I was 13 and she was 14. And I'm pretty sure my teacher was in his mid 20s or 30s. So basically she's the type of girl who literally hates school and would do anything to get out of class. Then I noticed her getting early to class and not leaving until everybody else left. Then I started paying a little more attention and he would always walk by her desk and slip her notes and candy and just weird stuff and it was really, really strange to me. He also moved to her desk right next to his, which his was all the way in the back left corner of the classroom. He would also always make jokes with her, which I didn't really understand until I found out they were sleeping together. So on Friday, my mom messaged her parents asking if they could pick me up Monday because my parents were going out of town that weekend and I hated riding the bus. Well, I'm guessing she didn't know that I was going home with her Monday. So that Monday, I got into her mom's car and I asked her mom where she was. Her mom said that she was failing math and her math teacher offered to tutor her. This teacher was also brand new. I'm running out of time, so like for part two. Here's part two of how I found out my best friend was sleeping with our teacher. So continuing on with the story, I told her mom that I've never seen him. Thinking where to go, I wonder every night. Swimming through your love and my sick lullabies. I don't want to say things out of pride. But when I think of you, I get a kick inside. I want to say hi when you're not fine. want to kiss you and make. Dancing so divine Your body on my body It never felt so right You thought I was a bad guy But had a different life You tutor somebody before Plus she told me her grades were sky high in that class I ended up forgetting my pencil pouch Which had my keys to my house in it So I had to go back anyways And when I went back the door was locked and like he had something over it or whatever But I could see under it Because he didn't cover it all the way And she was on his desk and he was kissing her or doing weird stuff. I knew her mom wouldn't believe me if I told her what I saw, so I just told her it was an emergency and she was in trouble. So we booked it back to the classroom. And at first we didn't see them, and then she seen a foot come from beside the desk. Mind you, we're peeking under it, so we couldn't really see much. Her, she started banging on the classroom door and screaming. I've never seen her this mad. I was honestly terrified that I ran into a separate classroom. The teacher to this day, I'm pretty sure he's still in jail, and she is still homeschooled and grounded with no phone. We found out that he was married with four kids. Well, was married. Okay, so story time. By the way, go to at Glam by Helen on Instagram and send me your story. You may be featured. Okay, so let's start from the beginning. My best friend stole from literally everyone. Like, it was kind of a problem. Well, there was this one time she stole a $50 bill from our teacher's wallet. I have no clue how she didn't get caught. Anyways, we lived in a small town in Florida. So, we'll call my best friend Destiny. 
Well, Destiny's mom was kind of short and her dad was really tall. I promise this plays into the story. Anyways, long story short, Destiny took after her dad and her sister took after her mom. So she was like hella tall. So anyway, she asked me to walk to the Jifty store in our town. So I didn't think anything of it, so I was like, yeah, sure, why not? Went inside and she told me to come with her straight to the register. I was kind of confused, but I just rolled with it. As soon as she walked up to the register, she pulls out her sister's wallet and I recognized it immediately. Then she pulls out a lottery ticket that had $6,000 on it, like for part two. Okay, so part two. So anyway, she pulled out a $6,000 lottery ticket. Like she won it. Like there was $6,000 on that ticket. Well, anyways, the lady said I need to see your ID. Obviously, she was like underage, but she looked so much older than what she was. So she pulls out her sister's ID and gives it to the cashier. And she walked out of that damn store with $6,000 in her hand. I yelled at her the entire way to her house. Then we finally got up there and she told me to shut up. Uh, kind of rude. Whatever. I didn't want to get into trouble, so I did. Then she slips her sister's wallet back in her purse. And then she told me that we would go shopping the next day for everything. I mean, kind of fun though. I went straight home and I told my Nana. And my Nana told her dad. And her damn sister didn't even know it was gone. And then the next day, my best friend literally came to school with her dad. Then her dad started talking on the intercom. Like to the whole school. Like for part three. Okay, so part three. So her dad literally went and talked into the intercom. I don't even know how he got past the producer. 